I'm going to do a little video about the float test. Here I have three different beakers with water in them, and they all have different temperatures. Um, so bear with me. This one is 121. This one is 110. And this one is 101, so all warm water. I'm gonna disrupt my extremely active starter and established starter as much as possible and plop a little bit in each one. So that one floated. That one did not float. Oh, now she's come back up. And that one didn't float. And it doesn't appear that it's coming back up. So then, I am going to stir my starter and we'll see what happens. I'm going to deflate all that air out of it. So the reason the float test in theory works is that when there's gas built up in your starter, it is going to cause it to float. Just like if we get in the pool and fill our lungs with air, we're going to float. However, once that air is let out, we're going to sink. Well, now this, that one still wants to float. But anyway, I hope this video helps explain why the float test is not reliable for determining if your starter is ready to bake with.